These are the grade three to five geometry words. Most of these words lend themselves beautifully to a movement or a gesture in math. So we're going to take 31 words here. Again, some of these words have already been established in the younger grades, so you can always go back and watch that video. But we'll fly you through these 31 words, um, and it's going to be much more natural association to the movement or the motion for this. The first word is a parallel. Usually I get my hands right out here. Parallel, they never intersect. Parallel. This becomes perpendicular, and this is intersect. So we've got the same, the, the, the same big ideas that we did in the younger grades. Parallel, intersect, perpendicular. And I also usually turn it sideways like this, perpendicular, and like this, just so they can see it doesn't have to always be in this position to be perpendicular. Another one would be symmetry. Then we're going to run quickly through the idea of a point, right? And a whole bunch of points, point, 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 would be a line segment or a line. And again, you'd have your fingers out for line and together for line segment. So um, point, you know, point, 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 line, line segment. So those would be very important. Now, if we go like this, we would have, um, we used to use this for meter. But if I don't touch my nose, that could become ray because ray has one end point. You know, your point, and it goes on in the other direction. Two rays together would be an angle. So we are very comfortable with the angle here and the other kinds of angles. I usually just do my angles right here on my hand because this allows me to make triangles out of the angles. So this would be for me two rays, a right angle, obtuse angle, acute angle. Of course, I could turn it any way I wanted to make sure they understood that it's not necessarily that it's always in this position to be a right angle. Right angle, acute angle, obtuse angle. Now, of course, once I've established that, I can make a right triangle. Later on, we're going to call this the hypotenuse, hypotenuse. But here's my right angle, and here's my right triangle. Um, the next big group of words I'm going to back up for, because why we're on the topic of triangles, I'll go back here and show you three of the triangles that are very common to know. And usually, once I get the right triangle, um, I would then show them the different triangles by their lengths. So this would be an equilateral triangle. If you can see my legs here, they're all the same distance apart, the, the floor and the two legs. And then this would be isosceles, two legs the same. Equilateral, isosceles, two legs the same. And then scalene, I kind of just turned funny, no legs the same. Scalene, equilateral, isosceles. So those become your three triangles by their lengths of their sides. While I'm here, we might as well go over the, uh, the circle. Again, I usually go circle like this. So we see we have the circle. My head is the center, so circle. And then I can start talking about 100 and, uh, 360 degrees in a circle, 360 degrees. And we could use the 90, you know, 135, 180, 90, 45, 10. We could even go beyond that and get like 270. So I usually go for this for the circle, you know, just a circle, center, and then we can do our definite angles. And then later on, we could just talk about a semicircle or a protractor, which would be just half the circle to measure these angles here. So you get your triangles, you get your circle, you get your angles. There's one more group of triangles we want to make sure. We talked about the right triangle. So um, here's the right triangle. If we push it out, the obtuse angle, we can bring in the obtuse triangle, just like that. If we push it together and bring the other one here, we have the acute triangle with the acute angle. So right angle, right triangle. Obtuse angle, obtuse triangle. Acute angle, acute triangle. So you can get those three triangles as well measured by their angle lengths or their angle measures. Um, the next group of words is um, symmetry. Now because we have a horizontal vertical symmetry this way, we might also talk about horizontal. But this would be vertical symmetry. Um, we've got congruent, same size, same shape. Again, I covered that one in the grade two. So you could talk about sliding it, flipping it, or turning it. Later on, we'll talk about translating, uh, reflecting, and rotating. But congruent's good enough for me. A big one in fourth grade is going to be this idea of a coordinate grid. So again, perpendicular is here. This would be two-column table, and this would be coordinate grid. So this would be right here. And then we want to plot the y-axis. So see, that's a y. And the x-axis, I kind of cross my fingers here. y-axis, x-axis. And then this is a coordinate grid. So plot the points. 
Start here, go over and up. Again, usually I turn sideways, so I'm going the same way the kids are, over and up. And usually I go like this. I usually make a sound with my mouth. Plot the points, over and up. Plot the point. Ordered pair, remember I said before this would be parentheses out here. Here would be ordered pairs. So you plot the point and you get your ordered pairs. You go over and up, coordinate grid. Uh, we talked about parallel. Again, in the younger grades, we talked about a parallelogram being here or here or here or here, and the trapezoid being here, which has just two, exactly two parallel sides. These are not parallel. And then, of course, we're just adding in the rhombus, all sides the same. So a square is a rhombus. It's also a rectangle. So you want to make the kids aware of those different kinds of quadrilaterals. And those are pretty much the 31 words that you need for grade 3 to 5.